will move to recursion in C++. In this topic, when function is called within the same function, it is called recursion. It means function calling itself again and again. That is what recursion is. Function which calls the same function is called as recursive function. Function that calls itself and does not perform any tasks after function call. It is known as tail recursion. In tail recursion, we generally call the same function with return statement. So we are going to see what is the syntax of recursion is. So recursion is nothing just it is a function and same function call is going to happen within that scope of that function. So here we see recursion function is the function name and in the round bracket it is written it means it is a function. Now within the scope this function name again is called. One thing to note is in a recursion the parameters can change but the function name is going to be same then then only we call it as a recursion. Now we are going to jump to the VS code and we will do tons of problems on recursion so it will clear your doubt. So let's jump to the VS code now. Now we are going to see the example of recursion. We are going to solve few programs using recursion. So I will create one file as recursion one dot cpp. Now here what we are going to first uh, program we are going to take is factorial of a number using recursion. So you might have done with the iterative method like using like for loop or whatever. Now we are going to do with recursion and I am going to tell where it is like I am going to tell you the advantages disadvantages of recursion also and when stack overflow happens recursion in recursion. So I am going to talk about that also. So you might have heard about stack overflow. So in recursion is that algorithm where the memory is allocated in the stack. So when memory it get full with the memory then stack overflow happened right. So first without concerning about that right now we are going to do the first program that is factorial of a number using recursion. So I will include the header file io stream using namespace std and I will write the main function. I have written the main function. Now what I have to do we have to consider so in recursion whenever we do so we need to find a base case. Base case means what where the program is going to terminate or from where the program go going to get reversal. So that is base case is that case when the program is going to terminate either or that is the case where what we know that is what base case is alright. So for a calculating factorial of a number we know only two things that is factorial of 0 and factorial of 1 that is factorial of 0 is 1 and factorial of 1 is 1 alright. So whenever we do this uh, factorial uh, program we store all the memories all the uh, whatever in, uh, in recursion algorithm is there we store in stack. So for that applying recursion we are going to create a we are going to create a function that is suppose fact as the function name and I will pass the parameter into it int n suppose alright. Now fact is the function name so it is going to be called again and again that is what we learned in recursion. So fact is that function name. So what is the base condition here? So if n is equals to 0 or if n is equals to 0 or n is equals to 1 then the factorial of these two numbers we know and factorial of these two numbers is what return 1. So what will be happening is we are going to know this factorial of 0 and 1 and we are going to calculate everything. So you might know the formula if I 
say you that find the factorial of n. So it is n into n minus 1 factorial, isn't it? That is what the factorial formula is, factorial of a number, right? So we're going to use that. So if someone says find the factorial of 2, it means what? 2 into n minus 1 factorial, that is what? Factorial of 2. So factorial of 1 we know, if you multiply by 2, so 2 factorial of 2 is going to be 2. So we are dividing the problem into sub problems and we are solving 0 for 0 factorial and 1 factorial. After that, we are covering all the numbers. We know 0, 1, so we can calculate factorial of 2. If, if we know factorial of 2, then we can calculate factorial of 3. Because if I want to find factorial of 3, that is 3 into 2 factorial. And from previous, we got the 2 factorial, right? So that is how it is going to work. And in recursion, all the things are saved in the stack. So whatever the values that are stored there, you might get confused. So I'll clear that also. And else, what I'll be writing, I'll be returning. What I'm going to return? I'm going to return n into n minus 1. And what is the function? Fact, right? n minus 1. So you can see here one thing. This fact is the same function name. This fact. So and this calling of function within the scope. So this is a recursion, isn't it? So as by definition, we know a recursion is calling same function within that function. So itself calling function itself. But here parameter is n. Here parameter is n minus 1. That we know that we can change the parameter. Parameter can be changed, but function name should be same. So that we call it as a recursion. So this is the whole logic of that recursion. All right. Now I'll move to the main function and I'll declare the variable as n, integer n. And I'll take input from the user and say n. Before that, I'll write a cout statement and I'll say enter the number. So the number for which we want to find the factorial of n del. Now, after taking input from the user, then I'm going to say C out and in C out, I'm going to say factorial of factorial of n factorial of n is what we need to call the function this this above function we need to call right so how to call we'll directly write the fact and we'll pass the value in it where we can call the function in c out statement also but we generally did fact n outside we call function outside but we can call inside the function also. This is one another way of calling function, right? So here we are done with the calling. At the last, I'll write return statement for the integer main type, right? So I'll do return zero. Now this is the whole program we did. Now I'll control S. I'll save the program. What logic we have used? N into N minus one. And this is calling same function again and again. We know for factorial 0 and 1, that is value is 1. If we know the factorial of 1, then we can find factorial of 2. Because we know the formula, one formula is there. That is, what is the formula? We want to find, if someone want to find factorial of n, that is equals to n into n minus 1 factorial. This is the formula we are using here. n into factorial of n minus 1. n minus 1 is a parameter we are changing. So this is and we know 0 and 1. We, if we know 1, we can find 2. If we know 2, we can find 3. If we, if, we, if we find 3, we can find 4. Similarly, we can go on. So this is the formula we are using and everything, whatever the value it is coming for all the values, that is getting stored in the stack. So it pushes every time. Right now you might not understand what is push and pop. Th things are there. That is all talk about the stack thing. 
all right all right so that's a data structure where it is getting stored all the values so that's how our recursion works i'll save the control s i'll click right click on the screen and i'll click run code now it is asking for the number suppose i want to find factorial of 5 factorial of 5 we know is 120 right so factorial of 5 is 120 similarly if i run the code again so it will give results accordingly if i want to find factorial of suppose uh, let's say 23 so factorial of 23 is going to be this so this is the first program we did with recursion now we're going to see more programs with this we're going to print some pattern with the recursion let's clear this out in the terminal okay all right now i'll create one more file and i'll write recursion 2.cpp now here we're going to see a program that is going to print some pattern write a program to print this pattern what is the pattern pattern is 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 and 5 4 3 2 1 so you have to print in forward weight if i write n equals to 5 so it is going to print from 1 2 3 4 5 then 5 4 3 2 1 so this is way it should print if i give n as 10 so it should print 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. This way it should print. So how to achieve with the recursion? What I said, first thing that we need to find the base case. What is the base case? Basically it is for printing forward, then it is printing backward all the stuffs, right? And we can use here the concept that Whatever in the stack, we just push everything, we'll just print till 1 to whatever the n value is. And after that, whenever it pops out, there also it should print the value. If you don't understand what I'm talking about right now in the stack, so if you see in stack, two operations are there. That is push and pop. So there what happens is, I'll just try to explain with you this. So suppose this is a stack and we want to print till 1 to 5 so suppose array we are using array for that so suppose 1 here 1 is there 1 2 3 4 5 so whenever we do insertion in a stack so first first of all it is printing from 1 to 5 then 5 to 4 3 to 1 right so I am considering this as 1, this as 2, all right, this as 3, this as 4 and this as 5. So what is going on? We are going to print whenever we are going to push the things like push the uh, function, whatever the recursive function we are going to write, that time we are going to print before pushing that. So when we pops out, means pushing means insertion in a stack, when it pops out, that time also we're going to print those numbers so in stack whenever we delete this memory so that is going to be printed as 5 4 3 2 1 so this concept we're going to use here now let's go and write the code for that what i'm trying to say so i'll include the header file as include io string all right now I'll write using namespace std our usual things that we write for the template int main and we're going to we are done with the our template. Now we're going to write the function name. So suppose we are taking that function to be returning nothing. So I'll take void and print num. Let's take the function name as printing num. Like it is going to print the numbers, right? So print num. I am taking the function name. You can take anything. Now I am going to write that int n as one variable and int num 
as another variable two parameters i am passing here now what i am going to do is here will run our base condition will be see what i am writing our base condition will be when n is equals to in brackets num plus 1 when base case is this it means suppose i enter n equals to 1 so it is going to and num equals to 5 so whenever it will enter and because we are printing double 5 right so we have to use num plus 1 so as to print this 5 also this 5 also otherwise it will go till 5 4 3 2 1 some other patterns will be happening right so whenever 1 2 n this small n is going to be equal to this that time it is going to be reversed because we are reversing from here right so that is the base condition right now this is the base condition all right now after that what i want to do is if this is done then i'll just simply return it i'll simply return it and in the else condition what are you going to write we're going to write that c out n isn't it cause we are printing till 1 to 5 so until unless this is achieved we need to print till 1 to 5 then after that we have to reverse it right so n and i'll give some space to it all right now i'll call the function recursively so here till here pushing of function will be happening so till here till line number 10 pushing of pushing means what insertion in a stack will be happening generally print num is the function name and i'll call that recursively by what n plus 1 comma num why i'm passing these parameters because that is going to what reverse our number so that is what it's going to happen now here i'll be printing out whenever the it is like deleting the memory from the stack that time it is going to print those numbers all right so this is 12 number line is that line all right this is all done for this function i'll show you that if i remove this one this line till how much it is printing and what are the stuffs it is printing i'll show you that thing also here i have to use comma semicolon then this function is done all right now i have to take what integer n that it is n is of integer type and num is also integer type two things are there and i'm going to take input from the user that till where we want to print and from where we want to reverse so n and num right these are the two variables we're going to take and i'll call the function here print num i'm going to write and call the function with the parameters as n comma num this is the calling of function this is what calling of function this line is what calling function itself calling function itself means recursion it means what recursion all right so now at the last i have to write what return the statement return zero all right now if i save this code and if i run this code let's see what we are getting a result or not now it is asking for the input i'll give one two five so one is the n is the one and five is the num right if i hit enter you see one two three four five four three two one it's happening now one thing i said I'll, I'll show you the changes what is happening one thing i said this is firstly getting printed till one two five it is getting printed now if i comment this line suppose you see this reverse of number will not be 
happening let's run the code again and give 1 2 5 this is the range you see 1 2 3 4 5 till 5 it is printing it means what is happening whenever popping out this is where popping out starts so this print as i already told that recursion is memory stored in stack right so whenever it pops out that time it also print that time it reverses because it is coming from top to down that's why this reverse of number is happening okay one more thing to clear why i have written num plus one let's change the number from num plus one to num right and save the code control s and run the code and if i give range here one to five you see it is printing till four not till five i have given range from one to five but it is still printing to one to four then again to one because we need to print till five right so i have to write num plus one because that is the base condition that will not be executed right so i have to write what num plus one to get our desired result okay i'll save the code and if i run the code and if i write one two five is the range from one it should start and till five it should print so it is happening now you can play with the code as let's suppose i'll comment this line it means it should print 54321 isn't it we commented out this line once now we are commenting out this line once let's save the code control s and i'll right click and run the code and i'll write 1 2 5 you see 54321 you can play with this code with lots of lots of types you can change the things you can change the parameters I can, and you can see the things all right now we'll move towards another you know problem same same type of problem we're going to see now i'll create one more program that is recursion 3.cpp all right now here we're going to print suppose let's say program to print 54321 using recursion suppose this is what we want to achieve again let's see what like what is the base condition we are writing all right we are just reversing and from there we are just again you know counting let's see so what we will do we will again include the header file include io stream and we will write using namespace std using namespace std all right and then what we will do we will write the main function that is int main and we will give the scope here what i have to write now we have to find the base condition what is the base condition that it is not printing zero it is coming till one then it is reversing back right so what would be the base condition base condition would be that if it is zero that time you know don't print it just skip that part right so what i'll do i'll create a function suppose again print num print num function i created and inside that i'm going to give int n as the parameter now inside this we're going to write the thing what is the base condition i said if n becomes zero that time because zero is not getting printed out right so whenever this is getting zero is done from there we have to reverse isn't it so zero is not going to print so what we'll do we'll return from here will return from here all right r e t u r n return else what i will do in the else condition we want to print that right so for that what we will write c out and i'll write n and i'll give some space to it so this is done and i'll call the function and that is going to be calling the function what print num that is going to be recursion 
and parameter we're going to pass is n minus 1. You see it is decreasing from 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. It is decreasing, isn't it? So this is going to be done. So that thing is going to be written. I wrote that. Now I'll write another C out statement and there what are you going to do is we're going to print that n, isn't it? Because we want to print from 1 to 5 also. All right. This is the function and recursion done. This is what calling function recursively. In recursion, the parameters can be different, but function name should be same. And that should be within the brackets, like within the scope. That is what we call it recursion. If you call from main function, that would not be called as a recursion. Now in the main, we'll write int n. I'm declaring one variable that is n of integer type. And what I'm going to write is, I'm going to take input from the user, c in n right and after that i'll call the function print num print num is the function i'll pass the parameter as n not parameter that is argument because we are passing some numbers because after taking input that will be what not variable that would be going to be argument right so and at the last i'll write return zero all right this is the whole code we are done with it I'll save the code, control S, and I'll right click and click on run the code. Now it is asking for the input. Suppose I want to print till where? 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and that is going to be right. I'll write 5. So it is writing 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If I run this code again, if I run this code again, it is again asking for the input. So if I say 100, let's say 100. So it it should print till 100 till you know 1 and after that it's printing till 1 and it is printing from 1 to 100 so these are the ways to write you know recursive problems you can write c out statement here so that you can give c in the terminal that is asking for the number all right so these are the few examples we covered recursion you can solve multiple problems with the recursion all right so one thing you need to remember that is in recursion you have to always to find you know the base case and recursion is that algorithm where it stores its memory in where stack so in stack generally recursion gets stored like recursion memory it is getting stored there recursion so whenever in iteration there is few difference i'm going to tell about recursion and iteration in iteration we end up in having in when we write for loop we end up in having in you know infinite loop but in recursion in a, it ends up in happening if you don't write the condition correctly then stack overflow happen hence the stack overflow.com name is you know if the memory is not freed every you know uh, all the memory is there you know and you written some condition that is not going to end anyway in recursion so stack overflow is going to happen it means your stack is going to be full stack is a data structure that stores some values that is used for stack you know statically we store variables and all those stuff so we'll end the recursion here you can solve multiple problems with recursion thank you